Let's turn in our Bibles today to the book of Philemon. It's a little um, book that consists of 25 verses and um, no chapters, just 25 verses. Uh, as you noticed, we are in continuation of marching through the Bible. Started in Genesis, each Sunday morning a different sermon from a different book in the Bible and marching in order all the way up now to the book of Philemon. Our message today I'd like to leave with you today. We trust the Lord would help us to convey our thoughts and our feelings toward this subject. The subject matter is today, or the message entitled, is what are you hearing? What are you hearing? Okay? What are you hearing? Let's look at the scripture reading in verse 1 through 7 in Philemon. Paul a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. So this letter to Philemon was from Paul and Timothy, from both of them. And um, the author is Paul and Timothy. He was addressing it to Philemon, a beloved friend and fellow laborer. That's the way we need to address one another and respect one another as a beloved friend and fellow laborer in the church. To the beloved Ephia, our Chippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. He addressed the church that was housed in a dwelling house, house church. They are. They were many of them in early days, and they are many of them around the world today. In Muslim land, Islamic lands, also in China, uh, communist countries, they are a lot of house churches today where they're not permitted freely to build their churches, and uh, in some places they can't even afford them anyway, but they have church in homes and do quite well. And we thank the Lord for God having a way and the means wherever, whatever circumstance, the gospel is getting out. And I thank God for that. All right. Uh, now he said here, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So he addressed himself and Timothy as author and to who it was going to and the church in his house. Then he said, grace and to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. What a statement here uh, addressing the church said, grace of God be with you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What a, what a statement. Then he said, I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers. So he said, I thank God for you, Philemon, and the church. I thank God for you and making prayers mention always. of you. In Verse 5, hearing of your love and faith. That's what brings the sermon title today, What Are You Hearing? And here Paul said, I'm hearing of your love and and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. Wow. That's what he was hearing about God's church. That the sharing of your faith may become effective by acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. The language, the terminology is so passionate by Paul and Timothy toward his fellow laborer and friend Philemon and also the church that was in this one brother's house as well. And how that God was blessing them and, and things were happening and, and Paul and Timothy were hearing back where they were stationed at about what God was doing in their midst. 
So what are you hearing today? What are you hearing today? Well, this is what I want people to hear about Souls Harbor Church. I want you to hear what God is doing in our midst. There are many, many miracles that God is doing in the midst of Souls Harbor Church. It's being heard by you folks, but it's also being heard out in the community. It's being heard in our local cities. It's being heard even in the nations of the world through our missions program, what God is doing in the life of Souls Harbor Church. And God has allowed you and I to be a part of it. The question is, are you doing your part? Are you letting somebody else do most of the work and you're sitting by and, 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 and feasting off of their efforts? Well, it's high time that we all get passionate about God. Get passionate about God. And then the evidence of passion about God is you, you have a passion for integrity. I want every family, every member in this church to have a burning passion for God, but then to have a burning passion for integrity, for living a Christ-like life. That's being missed in so many churches today. It's for people to have a passion for integrity. The only way you can be effectual in winning the lost is to have a life of integrity. A hypocrite ain't going to win nobody to God. One that claims Jesus on Sunday and lives like the devil through the week. I'm here to tell you that I want our church to be hungering and thirsting and praying for a great passion for God and then to have it manifest in having a passion for integrity and a passion for righteousness. Glory. And then to have it further manifest to have a passion for service. Passion for ministry and a passion for people. What are you hearing? I'm hearing that so many of our people uh, have got a great passion for God, a great passion for integrity, a great passion for service and ministry, and a great passion for people. You got to be people lovers. You got to love people if you're going to win them to God. Have a passion for people. And then have a passion for our cities and have a passion for our nations. I'm here to tell you that Souls Harbor Church, we can make a difference in our local cities, our local region. We can make an impact on the nations of the world through our mission support around the world and through our prayers and financial support for missions and the work of God. Yes, we've got to have a passion for God, and it's going to show up with a passion for integrity, a passion for ministry, a passion for people, and a passion for our cities, and a passion for the nations of the earth. Wow. Nobody lives on a little island to themselves. We all can make a difference. But what has happened in America today is everybody is saying, I can't make a difference. It's too big. I'm here to tell you that you can make a difference in our country and in our world. You can make a difference one person at a time. When everybody sits back and says, I can do nothing to change things and influence things, that's what happened. Nothing gets done. But when people have a passion for our cities, and for our nations, things get done. Prayer changes things. Wow. God is a good God. All right? So, what are you hearing? First of all, Paul said, I'm hearing of your love and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. 
That's, how, that's what I want people to be hearing about Souls Harbor Church in our community, in our cities. Is that our people has a great love and faith for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's number one priority. Secondly, hearing of your love and faith for all the saints. We want the, the word to be spread about Souls Harbor Church as we care about one another. That we have love one for another. And we're not to judge one another. We're not to criticize one another. We're not to put one another down. But we're to lift up one another and encourage one another. If you know somebody struggling in their relationship with God, go talk to them and pray about it. And pray with them. Say, I want to help you overcome this. Don't go tell everybody else about somebody's problem or weakness. All that does is further mess things up. When people come through the door of Souls Harbor Church, I don't look at so much the condition they're in, but I look by faith and see what condition they can become by getting close to God. Hallelujah. We're in the life-changing business, the gospel preaching of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we want the community, we want to be heard throughout our church that we are a church that has great love and great faith in Jesus Christ and how that we are to be heard about, noised abroad, that we are a church that has great love and great faith for all of God's people. Thirdly, let's notice. I thank my God, mentioning of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, and sharing of your faith. I want Souls Harbor Church to passionately be involved in sharing your faith. It's good occasionally to testify in church, but where your testimony is so valuable is beyond the walls of this building. When you out there among the people where people live and you begin to share your faith, and begin to tell the lost people what good things God has done for you and your family and your church. I want to hear about how you are sharing your faith with others. We don't want to be secret disciples of Jesus Christ. We don't want to be undercover agents. We want to boldly proclaim that we are children of Almighty God, and we are followers of Jesus Christ, and we want to publicly share our faith with others and all that we come in contact with. Sharing our faith. A passion for God and a passion for integrity. All right, let's notice further. By the acknowledgement of every good thing. We want all of us to acknowledge in church, in public, in family, we want to acknowledge every good thing in our life. It's because of Jesus Christ. All the blessings that come our way as a church, I want Jesus Christ to get the glory. Him, the one that's to be lifted up and praised. We want to acknowledge Him as a church for every good thing that comes our way. Just think about a a good thing that's coming our way tomorrow. Brad and the youth children's team are going to be ministering to kids on a lot of people's day off and spending time with children, molding and shaping their lives for the glory and the honor of God. That's a passion. I didn't tell Brad or anything, you have to do this, you need to do this and all that. No, he came with a willing heart and said, I want to head this up. It's a passion. It's a passion for ministry, a passion for people, a passion for kids, a passion for God, a passion for service, a passion for people. Our passion for God 
and a passion for integrity. Wow. We've got to acknowledge every good thing comes down from above the Father of lights in whom there is no variation, neither shadow of turning. God is God today, God is God tomorrow, and God will always be a faithful, loving, and true God. And last, Paul and Timothy was noticing Philemon and the local church there. They had great joy and comfort was brought to them because they had refreshed the saints. I want to hear about people refreshing one another, energizing one another, motivating one another, encouraging one another. Refreshing the saints, not tearing saints down, not um, tear them down as a Christian, but to build people up in their faith and their relationship with Jesus Christ. What are you hearing? I'm hearing good things. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. God's blessings is on the way. Amen. Not only God's blessings in the present, but God's super blessings, they're just around the corner as well. God wants to bless His people, bless His children, and bless His church. That's why I'm confident about the future. Knowing the one who holds tomorrow is Jesus Christ. And let's have a passion for Him. And we want to spread the word throughout the community. And we want the community to hear what's going on in the life of Souls Harbor Church. Hearing of our love and faith toward Jesus. Hearing of our love and faith toward all saints. Yes, and hear about how the church is sharing their faith with people that's lost. And how this is a church that truly acknowledge their every blessing comes from God. And how that this church is also refreshing the saints and encouraging the saints. If I can't lift somebody up, I sure don't want to hurt them or or discourage them. I want to be known as a man of God and me and Patty that we refresh saints and encourage them. And if somebody is struggling, they're just as precious as the most mature and developed among us. We need to rally around those that are struggling and to hold them up in prayer and pray for them and refresh them in Jesus Christ. Oh, you're preaching good, Brother Ball. Just keep it up. I believe I will. Thank you very much. Amen. Let's give God a good clap offering of praise. Amen. What are you hearing? Well, I'll tell you, I'm hearing good things. And by faith, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. There's blessings, there's miracles. That's waiting around the corner. There's miracles um, in your life that is waiting to come reality. Don't lose heart. Don't become discouraged because around the next curve, that great blessing could be afforded to you. But so oftentimes I've saw people become disheartened or disillusioned with people. And uh, and it and they just looked around and they just given up too quick. Folks, let me tell you, don't give up. The battle is about over. The battle is just about won. Don't never give up too quick. God's victory is at hand in your life for that personal thing that you're dealing with right now. That personal battle, don't give up. Victory. Is just at hand. Blessings are around the corner. I'm hearing the sound of abundance of rain. I'm hearing good things come in the way of Souls Harbor Church. We haven't seen nothing yet compared to what God wants to do. God wants to pour out His blessings. I preach for many and many of a year that God is looking for a church and a congregation to pour out His blessing and favor upon. And I say, why not Souls Harbor Church? Why not Souls Harbor? And God is blessing our church in abundant fashion. And God wants to lead us to greater victory and greater success 
ahead. The best is yet to come. Would you come back to the music, please, this morning? I ask the congregation to stand with me and let's prepare for prayer this morning. Make your way on down to the altar. I'd like to pray over you this morning. Before we leave God's house today,